A blessed day to everyone. We thank our Lord for yet another Sunday and another fresh start to this new week of this new month. As you are watching right now, I hope and pray that our merciful Father protect us and keep us well as we collectively join our hearts together and bless Him. To begin our service, let me lead you to 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 to 11, where it says, By this the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through Him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Amen. As Christians, continuing in our daily walk with Christ and interacting with this world, let us be reminded that our Lord God has given us His Spirit, a spirit of love. And though it may be hard sometimes, especially in this current time, God commands us to love our brethren. So this morning, as we worship Him and remember His communion, let us be reminded of His love and mercy towards us. Let us bow down our heads in prayer. Lord God, we bless You and we worship You. Lord, we acknowledge your mercy and your great love for us. Lord, this morning, we thank you for your grace that has sustained us throughout. And you know the concerns of everyone. We ask that you answer our prayers. Lord, we pray for protection. We pray for healing for those who are sick. Lord, we ask that you give us and guide us with your wisdom in everything that we do. And Lord, most importantly, we pray for salvation for those who need you the most. This we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Where can I go from your spirit? And how can I escape your love? Your love for me is deeper than the sea And higher than the heavens above Where can I flee from your presence? Now that you abide in my heart is your home, your temple, your throne. So what could ever keep us so far from your love? It's higher than the heaven. Your love is deeper than the ocean. Nothing in creation could take Your life, 
Blessings of our God Almighty be with you all as our Lord Jesus Christ fill your hearts with joy and peace through the Holy Spirit. Today being the first day of the week of this month of September, we once again join our faith together for a holy remembering of our Lord Jesus Christ as we celebrate the Lord's table. And I'm excited to do that. So let's join in prayer. Bow down with me. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great salvation in Christ. Lord Jesus, thank you for your life and how you lived it, lived it with us in mind. We pray that you will once again bless us with more understanding of you and your ways as we join online for holy remembering this day. Let your word nourish us and change us to be more like you through the Holy Spirit. All these, Father, for your glory as we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Allow me to share with you a message entitled Communion, Our Courage and Confidence Until Christ Returns. Our passage is 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. But before we read, let me set our passage once again from a background of a story from one of my personal experiences. Way back, April 2016, thoughtful brethren in the church organized a surprise 60th birthday party for me at a family dining restaurant owned by a couple who are members in the church I was pastor. After a short ceremony at dinner time, a brother in Christ approached me as I was getting food from the buffet table. And he quietly whispered to me that he was giving me a unique gift. He said that he and his wife were bringing me and my wife to a two weeks tour of Israel around the first week of September that year in time for their wedding anniversary. After I heard that, I kind of held back my emotions but began to look forward with excitement. From that time on, every day was like preparation day for the trip. A portion of every day was devoted to finding out what to wear, what to bring, and looking at the significant Bible places we might visit. I noticed that since... That promise, even gloomy and bad days seem to be insignificant because it was somewhat drowned out by the anticipation as I look ahead to an exciting event 
forthcoming. Relating that to the observance of the Lord's table or communion, Jesus commanded that his disciples highlight not only his sacrificial death for our sin, but highlight also his imminent return. For this reason, the Lord's table is not just looking in the past, but communion is very much a look with much excitement in the present and towards the future. So, the question for us, beloved in Christ, is are we looking forward with longing and excitement to the time when our Lord Jesus Christ will come again and we will have communion with Him and with all the saints in His kingdom. A follow-up question is, how does that excitement of looking forward impact the way we live in the present? Let's read our passage before I continue. In 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 to 26, it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Communion is a recurring reminder of Christ to us of his accomplishments through his death and he promised us a second coming so we can look forward with great courage and confidence in living hope. So why is communion our courage and confidence until Christ return? First reason I would like to offer you is because Christ offering himself provides courage in the present. And I would like to uh, highlight for you the first part of verse 26 where it says, you proclaim the Lord's death. And if we look at this in the whole context once again, in verse 23, it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And once again, in verse 26, let me note for you, it says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he Comes. And I, I pray that reading that passage once again has sensitized us. You know, when Jesus said, this is my body, quoted by the Apostle Paul here in our passage, it meant that the body represented all of what Christ has done when he was in human form. Did you hear that? In the phrase, which is for you, Jesus implies that all his earthly life in human form was to a large extent lived for his disciples then, his disciples now, and those disciples in the future. In other words, God is saying to them and to us that all of what he taught 
and modeled for us through his life all of what he earned and secured for us by his suffering and death on the cross. All of his graciousness, his mercy and love, all these, he's saying, all these remember in communion. And not just remember, brothers and sisters, not just remember them, but believe them to such extent that you cannot prevent yourself from declaring and sharing to people around us. That is the implication of what the Apostle Paul said, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Brethren, I believe that you will agree with me about the present time. When I say that we will always live with clear and present danger. Let me repeat, we will always live with clear and present danger. Because this fallen world, this earthly existence is and will always be a dangerous place and time to live in. This ongoing pandemic is a powerful reminder of that harsh reality. But Christ gives us a greater and better reality to remind ourselves constantly. Christ commands us to celebrate communion to help us keep looking at the present with assurance because of what He already secured for us at the cross and reinforced by his resurrection from the dead. Brothers and sisters, consider all his life was the expression of love to his people and he was desirous of giving them and us something to remind and be encouraged always concerning his regard for our spiritual well-being. When we think of what Christ has done for us in the past, we can live confidently in the present. Why? Because the generosity God extended to us His church, the awesome display and working of His love and power that saved us by grace is also preserving us in the present. It gives us assurance of how God would deal with us graciously in the present, even amidst these ongoing troubles and difficulties of our day. And this was true for God's chosen people, Israel, as they traveled from Egypt to the promised land. And this will hold true for the church as we journey in pilgrimage from this life to eternity. Brothers and sisters, we as God's people today can have the same outlook when we gather to celebrate the Lord's communion. Did you hear me? We can have the same outlook, more especially as we gather in holy remembrance in the Lord's communion. And we remember with assurance that Jesus died for us. And we look forward with confidence to his return, as verse 26 points out to us. This living hope encourages us as we live each day for him. Now, why is communion our confidence and courage till the end? The second reason I would like to offer you is because Christ offering himself provides anticipation for the future. And note verse 26, the second part now of verse 26, our focus this day is on verse 26. And verse 26, the second part says, until he comes. And once again, for context purposes, let me read for you from verse 23 all the way to verse 26 so that we can see 
the whole intent of our Lord when he spoke these words to the Apostle Paul. At least that's how the Apostle Paul claims it happened. In verse 23, it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, listen to what he said. This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And verse 26 now, once again. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. And here it is. Until he comes. And emphasis on that last phrase, until he comes. Christ commands us to celebrate communion also to help us keep looking forward. To help us to keep looking forward with excitement to him in our glorified state forever. It is a celebration of his present life and of his future return in glory. To be more illustrative of what I am explaining, let me go back to my story regarding the gift to a free tour in Israel. After that generous brother in Christ made that promise to me, I could not prevent myself from sharing it to my family, to the church members, And in every opportunity, I get to speak about the exciting prospect which was forthcoming. An example was when a couple requested me to officiate their wedding in the month of September. I would quickly beg to move the dates when somebody asked me to do ministry in September because it will conflict with our trip to the Holy Land. Allow me to point out that in terms of prospects for good things that awaits us in the future, I can tell you with great surety that a free tour to the Holy Land will fail and it will fade in comparison to the amazing prospects that awaits in the future when Christ reigns in the kingdom of God. And why did I mention uh, the kingdom of God? Because there is no mention of the kingdom of God in 1 Corinthians 11, brethren, in our passage. And that's true. But if we go back, to the time when the Lord Jesus instituted the ordinance of communion, Jesus mentioned that his coming again will begin his reign in God's kingdom here on earth. Note the following scripture references of this in the Synoptic Gospels. First is, let me show you on the slide, Matthew 26, verses 26 to 29. It says here, while they were eating, Jesus took some bread and after blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you, and take note, in my Father's kingdom. And then in 
The next gospel, in the gospel of Mark, in chapter 14, verse 22 to 26, it says the same thing. Jesus says the same thing about the kingdom. Verse 22, he says, While they were eating, he took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take it, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. More or less the same details as with Matthew. In verse 24, it continues and says, And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. He said. Verse 25, Truly I say to you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And there is that word or that phrase, the kingdom of God. And just to finish it up, in Luke 22, verses 14 to 20, in verse 14 that we begin, it says here, when the hour had come, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I shall never again eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he said, take this and share it among yourselves for I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until the kingdom of God comes. For I say to you, I shall never again eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And Jesus' words points to the glorious truth of the coming kingdom of God, which the prophets Haggai, Zechariah, Ezekiel, and the others says that Messiah will set up when he returns as victorious king of kings. All believers will join with him in celebration of this feast. And then we move on to the phrase, eat again, that Jesus mentions represents the marriage supper of the bride and the lamb. Revelations 19 verse 9 to 10 speaks about this. And let me read for you. Verse 9, then he said to me, write, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are true words of God. But the phrase, kingdom of God, or my father's kingdom, definitely points to the messianic earthly kingdom. Although the amillennialist view interprets Jesus as speaking of a heavenly kingdom. But I believe that if we follow a more literal, literal interpretation of the scripture, we can see strong support for a literal earthly kingdom which Messiah will set up when he returns. And regarding this, let me bring to you on your slide is Ezekiel 45, verse 21. This is a prophetic word and clearly states that, allow me to read for you, in the first month, on the 14th day of the month, you shall have the Passover, a feast of seven days, unleavened bread shall be eaten. And for context purposes, Ezekiel chapters 40 up to 48 where we will find the description of the time of the millennium. And that's where you find chapter 45 in there, okay? And thus, the meal Jesus was referring to was a meal that marks the full realization of the Passover or God's redemptive plan. 
it marks the full realization of God's redemptive plan, not just the Passover, and will be celebrated in the millennial kingdom. Now, brothers and sisters, I do not want us to go into an argument on eschatology. That will be for another time and opportunity. But I really want to inspire you to look beyond the dangers and difficulties of our day. I want to help you to look beyond these things. I really want to encourage you to look beyond your pain, your sorrows, and your anxieties and look with excitement to the glorious prospects of our amazing future according to the promises of the Word of God, of the Word of our Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, imagine Imagine with me in the millennial kingdom, in the reign of Jesus Christ. Imagine a world dominated by righteousness and goodness. Imagine a world where there is no injustice. A world where everyone is treated fairly. That world will be a world where truth, righteousness, and excellence marks every aspect of life interpersonal relations, commerce, education, and the government. It will be a world of truth and righteousness and excellence. A world where there is complete and permanent peace, where joy abounds and good health prevails. So much so that people live for hundreds of years, a world where the environment is pristine purity of the Garden of Eden, where peace reigns even in the animal kingdom, so that the wolf will dwell with the lamb and the leopard will lie down with young goats and the calf and the young lion, and the fatling, they will lie down together, and a little boy will lead them. That's what Isaiah chapter 11 verse 6 tells us. This will be a world ruled by a perfect, glorious ruler who instantly and firmly deals with with any sin. Now, humanly speaking, those descriptions I just shared with you may seem very far-fetched. It sounds utopian and like a fantasy that could never be a reality, yet it accurately describes conditions during the future earthly kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that this is at the root of Christ's intentions when he commanded the observance of communion. Christ commands us to celebrate communion, to keep us looking forward with excitement to Him and to that day when we will be with Him in our glorified state forever. It is a celebration of His present life and of His future return in glory. Christ's offering provides anticipation for the future. In closing, W.A. Criswell, he was a pastor looked up by many of the pastors we look up to in the United States. He said, there are many kinds of memorials on the earth. If you have ever been to Washington, D.C., you've probably seen there, the tall monolithic marble monument called the Washington Monument. In Egypt, you can see many towering obelisks. 
sometimes a monument, Chris will said, will take the form of a mausoleum. In India, you will see the most beautiful mausoleum in the world, the Taj Mahal, built by Shah Jahan in memory of a beloved wife. But let me add to Chris Will's words. He said, but our Lord did not create a monument and mausoleums to bring us to the memory of his amazing accomplishments in our behalf. In fact, this memorial is not in the form of any kind of structure. He did it in a most basic way, by partaking a piece of bread and drinking wine. And this simple memorial is to be repeated again and again because, first, Christ offering himself provides courage in the present. And second, Christ offering himself provides confidence towards the future. So let us constantly encourage ourselves in the Lord, brothers and sisters. Let's put our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ in the midst of our difficulties, in the midst of the times of uncertainties and problems. Let's continue to put our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what I believe why the Lord Jesus Christ designed communion. And so, in conclusion, remembering and proclaiming Christ's death until he comes again in communion gives us courage for today and confident hope for tomorrow. Let's prepare ourselves for a holy remembering as we celebrate communion and our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh,
Brothers and sisters in Christ, I trust that at this point of our worship service, you are now prepared with the elements of communion of the bread and the cup. And so, uh, before we continue to partake in holy remembrance, allow me to exhort you with a few words. And I have been, done a lot of memorial services through the years. In those ceremonies, words are spoken or arrangements made to honor the deceased. And we have become all too familiar when people say, if he or she were alive, I know this is the way he or she would have wanted it. Now, think how wrong it would be for loved ones to go against the wishes or the desires of the deceased, most especially on how he or she will be remembered. When we Christians celebrate communion, what we are doing is more than hold a memorial service. The Lord Jesus who died is alive and is present and is involved in this memorial service. You know, unlike the usual memorial service that I do, the remembering is about the dead person. But this remembering today is not about someone who is dead. This remembering is someone who is alive. Now, how should we ought to conduct ourselves? We should guide our thoughts, our attitudes, our words, and our actions to be consistent with the love and compassion of our ever-present Lord Jesus Christ. Today, as we participate in the Lord's memorial celebration, give serious consideration to how you and I are living now and how will we be living out our life in remembrance of Him. Let's ponder upon that before we partake of the bread and the cup. And so with this, let's come into prayer before the Lord. And let's open our hearts to the searchlight of the Holy Spirit to see if there are hurtful ways in us that is not compatible with our Lord. Let's ask forgiveness for these things. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in humility of heart. Lord, asking you to examine us, Lord. If there are things you see that are not right in your eyes, if there are things in our hearts, Lord, in our lives, in the way we live, that is not consistent with you, Lord, we ask forgiveness. We ask your mercy, Lord, and we ask your cleansing. Let the power of your blood continue to purify us and cleanse us. Prepare us as we partake of these elements that reminds us of your glory, that reminds us of your offering, that gives us confidence and courage both in the present and in the future. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you for counting us, Lord, worthy to participate in this memorial celebration for you today. Once again, we give you back praise and glory in Jesus' name, your name, O Lord, we pray this. Amen. Together, let's partake of the bread. In full remembrance 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, let's now partake of the cup. Let's allow ourselves to be sensitized by the Holy Spirit with the meaning of this element and the meaning of what we have done as we have learned today. Thank you, O Lord. Let's begin to thank the Lord at this time. Thank you, O Jesus. Thank you for your great sacrifice. Thank you for your life lived with us in mind, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for the offering of yourself that has given us great privileges, O God, and eternal life. Thank you for all these things. Once again, Lord, we continue to recommit our lives to live for your glory, to live, Lord, as expressions of your goodness, Lord, in us, in salvation. Thank you, O Father. And we pray, Lord, for your grace and your anointing, Lord, and enablement that, Father, always, even in the midst of adversity, and these challenges we face, that we will continue to be for your glory and your glory alone. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And let's continue to join our faiths together just before I give you the final benediction. Let's also pray for others, brethren. Let's pray for the people around us that God would have mercy and would also touch their lives so that they might know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father, as we close this service, we take to mind and to heart and we join our faith together, Lord, and we pray, Lord, for people, Lord, around us, Lord our loved ones, our friends, our neighbors, oh God, most especially those who do not know you as Lord and Savior. Have mercy on them. Touch their lives, Lord. And may your grace come to them that they might be open to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we ask for them, Lord, and we ask in Jesus' name. We continue to lift up to you our situation, Lord, in this pandemic. We pray that your sovereignty will continue to work. May you be our protection. May you be our wisdom, Lord, on how to conduct ourselves, Lord. May your mercy arrest, Lord, the growing numbers of infection, most especially in our country, in our cities, O oh God. And once again, Lord, we continue to put our trust in you to the time when you will bring solution to all of these things. In the meantime, have mercy on those who are sick at this time, those in the hospitals, those who are fighting, Lord, infection at this time, those who are critical, Lord, even those at the point of death. May your mercy be upon them. We ask you to, Lord, open their spiritual eyes, Lord. If they do not know you as Lord, Lord, touch them, reach out to them, Father. We pray for their salvation. We pray for frontliners, O oh God. May your salvation also be with them as your protection covers them, Father. As once again, we give you back all thanksgiving and praise and honor in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And so, as Romans chapter 15 verse 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May God continue to bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
God bless you, brethren. From your love is higher than the heaven. Your love is deeper than the ocean. Nothing in creation could take me away from your love. Nothing could take me away. Your love, there is nothing greater. Your love, there is nothing strong. So I could be free I am persuaded That neither death nor life Could separate us From the love of Christ Nothing in the present Nothing to come Could take me away From your infinite love Your love is higher than Your love